Well, good morning, everyone. It's Russ Barkley here, back again with another short commentary on topics related to ADHD in children and adults. Thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk very briefly about the risk of internet addiction and gaming disorder in children, teens, and adults with ADHD. There has been a growing body of research on this topic to the extent that last year, uh, in December, as most recently, was a review published in Clinical Psychology Review that was a meta-analysis of the existing research. And the authors of this study found 39 different studies on this topic. Uh, so very important, and we can see that there's a growing body of evidence primarily coming out of Asia, but also some of the studies were done in Italy, several done here in the United States. Uh, and it appears to suggest that this is a universal problem that is linked to ADHD. Now, in this particular review, along with some of the other studies I looked at, it appears that the risk of internet addiction generally, and specifically gaming disorder, is somewhere between a low of 17% in some of the early studies to as high as 49% in some of the studies coming out of Europe and Asia. So averaging about 30 to 35%. So about one in three people with ADHD, particularly teens, appears to be at risk for internet addiction, and more specifically, for gaming disorder itself. Now, what do we mean by addiction and disorder? What we mean is that there is a persistent engagement in these activities, in the use of the internet, and specifically with gaming, that is to such an extent that it interferes with the individual's daily adaptive functioning, with the responsibilities that they're supposed to be doing. Moreover, when efforts are done to try to get the individual to withdraw from the use of the internet or playing games, one sees what we see in people with addictions, and that is that there's irritability, there may be aggressiveness, there's certainly oppositionality and resistance to giving up the activity or even reducing the activity. It may begin to interfere with things such as sleeping and eating. We may find a great deal of conflict in the individual's life between them and others who are trying to get them to be more responsible. So all of the signs that we see, the sort of need for an engagement in to excess of use of the internet appears to be at high risk in people with ADHD. Now, what these reviews indicate is that both the inattention and the hyperactive impulsive symptoms are predictive of these problems, but especially it is the dimension of inattention, uh, which you know is largely executive functioning, that is most predictive of this. So degree of inattention is predicting degree of risk for these particular disorders. Uh, in addition, however, uh, impulsivity is also to some extent related to risk for uh, internet addiction and gaming disorder. This is a study that found in China among college students, internet addiction was as high as 49%. And all of the symptoms of ADHD were predictive of risk, but again, specifically, it was the inattention dimension. Another study that was published over in Child and Adolescent Mental Health back in 2020 also found that besides ADHD symptoms, there was some role being played here by the degree to which the individual had experienced depressive symptoms and the degree of anxiety, especially social anxiety, which makes sense. The more depressed you are, the more socially anxious you are, the more likely you are to interact with others uh, in, a, in a safe place, such as on the internet without personal engagement with these individuals. Uh, and many people find that to be a more secure form of engaging with others than uh, would be the case in direct interactions with other people. And then finally, a recent study that was published over in the Research and Developmental Disabilities last year showed that it wasn't just the inattention dimension of ADHD, but this second attention disorder that I talk about on my channel, sluggish cognitive tempo, or what more recently we have renamed as cognitive disengagement syndrome, uh, syndrome rather, was also predictive of these risks for internet addiction and gaming disorder, and especially the 
aspect of daydreaming uh, and mind wandering, but especially daydreaming, was linked to this beyond just ADHD. So it looks like both attention disorders are elevating the risk for problems with the internet and with gaming. Lastly, there were a couple of papers that were done by clinicians that suggested that when they encountered people who had both ADHD and internet addiction, treating the ADHD, particularly with medication and reducing the symptoms, did help to reduce their overall internet addiction and gaming disorder addiction. So uh, this suggests that managing those ADHD symptoms, particularly inattention, <clears throat> excuse me, was very important to helping the individual reduce and even recover from their internet engagement. My guess is that there would probably also be some role for cognitive behavior therapy, particularly the therapies that target the executive deficits in ADHD. That might be beneficial here as well, but we don't know that. There's no research suggesting that at this time. So there you have it high risk for these two disorders, particularly gaming disorder, in children, teens, and adults with ADHD, uh, and being driven largely by their ADHD symptoms, and especially inattention, and obviously, as I just said, the other attention disorder of cognitive disengagement symptom. And treatment of ADHD seems to help to treat these other conditions. So thanks for joining me on this channel. I hope you found this short commentary informative. Uh, please recommend us to others who might have an interest in ADHD. And thank you for joining me on this channel and for uh, subscribing. And if you haven't done that, hit the subscribe button as well. So I'll see you later this week with some more research and reviews on the weekend. Uh, and again, thanks so much for watching this channel. Be well, everybody.